it seems to me that you have to situate Balkan Hole historically um, within a, a culture whereby it was felt that there were no more possibilities for figurative sculpture. Why was it felt there were no more possibilities? I think partly because um, figurative sculpture had been so debased by its misuse by successive or different totalitarian regimes. One thinks of the heroic worker, the soldier, the mother of the nation. And partly also through its emasculation, um, which found its apotheosis in the, the marvellous existential sculptures of Giacometti. At that particular moment, it was thought that there was little more that could be done, both because of its abuse and its um, being pushed to the limits by Giacometti. And it was only, I think, after 20 or 25 years whereby other conventions had predominated in contemporary art that uh, it was felt by Balkenhol, and we should remember he was taught by Ulrich Rukrim, the one of the masters of abstract sculpture, that maybe the figure should again be released from the block of stone or the block of wood. It's the oldest idea. It's, it's an idea which is as, uh, goes back to the Assyrians and Egyptian sculptures which so influenced Balkenhol when he was a student and he saw them in the British Museum. And interestingly, it was those sculptures, more than the, uh, the more achieved naturalism of the Roman or Greek sculptures, which impressed him. And I think we find some kind of analogy to that in the fact that his sculptures are naturalistic, but they are, no, they are in no way completely detailed or realistic in the way that, say, the Roman sculpture was. So they exist somewhere between uh, the specific individual and the general human state. I think it's, it's dangerous to juxtapose, to oppose absolutely a tradition of abstraction from a tradition of representation. And I think we have to talk about this being a revival of representation within a continuation of those traditions. Um, the way that Balkenhol uses the block or uses the frame of the wood in his reliefs is very significant. You're extremely aware of them being wood, of their substance and stuff and their warmth, and at the same time, you are aware of the image uh, or the representation within it. Well, generally, it seemed to me significant that Balkenhol's work began to emerge, uh, to be visible in Europe um, in the latter part of the 1980s, which coincided with a period when you know, the ideological certainties which had underpinned the East and West divide were fragmenting, and fragmenting very fast indeed. Now, one of the symbols of those certainties was, of course, the statue. And we saw successive programs. I mean, it was very important for uh, the people in the, the countries under Stalinist rule to topple the statues, the Leninist statues, the Stalinist statues, as a sign of toppling the ideological framework which controlled their life. Now, it seemed to me important that we understand that the space for Balkenhol's anti-heroic, ordinary, um, figurative sculpture um, was created by the fact that the statues had toppled uh, in the East. So that, in a way, is, um, I think, the general cultural situation. More specifically, within contemporary plastic arts in Germany, um, he taps in to a specifically German tradition about wood carving and about, for example, the solitary figure standing in in the wilderness. One thinks of Caspar David Friedrich's Monk by the Sea. Um, one thinks also of German Romantic philosophy and their uh, engagement with the idea of the tree as a symbol of uh, man's solitude. Balkenhol taps particularly into that tradition. One understands postmodernism as having arrived when the grand narratives of modernism no longer pertained, were no longer a way of people explaining their position within the world. So I think if one understands postmodernism as a situation in, in which there was a tremendous fragmentation of um, the ideas and the beliefs in progress, which has sustained modernism, then yes, Balkenhol comes after that. At this, but at the same time, 
He is not um, enamored by, for example, philosophy about the simula simulationist philosophy or about the loss of the real. Um, I think he reinstates a value of the real, um, of a sense of humanity as standing and being important within the flux and flow of contemporary communications, whatever, which um, would be thought of as working against the flow and the em primary emphases of much postmodern philosophy writing. One of the things that fascinates me when you look at one of Balkenhol's sculptures or reliefs is the fact that you immediately recognize them as an individual. But yet, as you begin to try and define what makes them individual, you see that face slip back into a more general expression of humanity. Um, and he constantly keeps you in play in a dialectic between, as it were, the fragment of humanity, which is the individual, and the general mass of humanity, the crowd. One of the uh, pieces in this show deals with that explicitly, which is the work 57 Penguins. Um, and I think it would have been difficult for Balkenhol to represent a crowd, a social or a colony of humans in that way, 57 humans, but he does it through um, another creature, the penguin, and we know about it, their, their habit of staying together, of following each other. Yet at the same time, as you're amongst the penguins, each of them has a different gesture or a different, different posture. It's important for Balkenhol to retain this dialectic between the two, the individual and the collective, so that his work doesn't suggest some kind of nostalgic return to a fictional unity or some sort of harmonious state of society which otherwise it might be interpreted as doing. The animals enable him to represent emotions, actions and gestures or states of being which I think he would still find difficult to represent through an actual human gesture or posture, partly because of the way, again, that those have been tainted by their exploitation in expressionist sculpture. I mean, there is, of course, a, a, a tradition, going back at least to the 19th century, of, of animal sculpture as a way of expressing um, human emotions. And it just seems to me to be a way in which the artist can loosen up, can bring into play elements of humour, um, of, uh, in a way of light-heartedness and of, in, of an in, a way of engaging people which is more problematic with the human form. I think the humour is, is counterposed by a, a very um, specific melancholy. So I think we have to, again, bear that in mind, that there is a sense in which the apartness of these sculptures stands as some kind of um, analog analogous situation to our own apartness from each other. Um, conceptually, I think that Balkenhol is extremely aware of the strategies and the actions which um, formed the part of the conceptual minimalist movement of the 60s and that his work would not have been conceivable without those frames of reference. But there are frames which he is now, in a way the certainties which inform some of those practices have now been fragmented. And in, within that fragmentation he has been able to reimpose, reinsert the human form. So if we regard minimalism as a kind of frame, we have to understand that that has been fractured and within the fractures and the breaks, uh, the specifics of experience and culture can be reinstated again.